This is LXBN TV, and I'm Colin O'Keefe. A report released on Thursday by Louis Free, former director of the FBI, revealed that former Penn State football coach Joe Paterno, Joe Paterno and other high-ranking university officials intentionally covered up sexual abuse by former defensive coordinator Jerry Sandusky. To explain the report and its impact going forward, we bring in Joe Bagot, attorney in New Jersey and author on the Sports and Entertainment Law Playbook. Joe, first off, what can you tell us about the findings of the report? Just how bad was the cover-up at Penn State? Well, really, it couldn't get much worse. Um, you know, everything, you know, back when everything broke, um, you know, last November, you know, I was one of those people that said, hey, let's not jump to conclusions. Let's, you know, let's wait and see what happens. And, you know, I don't know if I put my foot in my mouth or what, but, you know, pretty much everything that we thought could be true is true, at least if you believe uh, this report. And it, it seems to be credible. Uh, it's certainly that you can't impeach the credibility of the investigator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, I think the, the number of interviews they'd done was something like 400 interviews with formal people. And it was pretty much, you know, worst case scenario, Joe Paterno knew about this. He let it go on. Hiring officials knew about it. They let it go on. And Lo and behold, based on this report, we have our, our worst case scenario. So what are your thoughts on the reactions that we've seen thus far? Some people saying Paterno's statue must come down. Nike has removed his name from uh, their uh, child care center at their campus. Um, but what are your thoughts on the reaction coming from uh, Sandesky and Paterno's supporters and then from the other side as well? Sure. Well, um, you know, you mentioned Nike and, and Phil Knight's um, um, statement, and I, I thought that was was very. Um, it really hit home with me. I, I thought, you know, people criticize Phil Knight. Uh, you know, he was very uh, outspoken during the Tiger Woods uh, scandal a few years ago, and he was quick to defend Joe Paterno. Uh, you know, last fall, and you know, he, he more or less retracted his statement. Um, you know, but he did it in, a, in a, I thought, a tasteful way. Uh, you know, people are criticizing him now because they're saying, oh, well, you know, Joe did more than make, Joe Pa did more than just make missteps. I mean, this was serious. So, you know, I think we're splitting hairs. But um, so I, I think that's one, that's one um, perspective. Um, you know, this whole thing about the statue, you know, I, I don't know that I'm, I'm really, uh, that I can say they should take it down or they should leave it up. I, and I haven't really, um, I think that's a matter of opinion. I, I really don't think there's any uh, legal precedent uh, for, you know, for whose statue gets to stay up. And I mean, we're talking about the court of public opinion here, and, and that's you know that would be the statue. I mean, it goes back to the uh, the asterisk after after the home run record. I mean, it's it's not really a legal issue. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, finally, what bearing will this report have on future? criminal and civil proceedings, which if these, if this report, you know, holds true and, and the findings are what they are, it seems like there's going to be a lot of action to come in the future. So what bearing does this report have on that? Right. Well, you know, you, you, um, there are a couple of things now, um, talk about civil and criminal, uh, you know, which are two different kinds of court proceedings. You have to keep in perspective that this is not a court document. This uh, document is not, you know, it's not going to be admissible in court. It's, it's, um, it's a hearsay document. It, it doesn't get in. Um, now, um, you know, basically everybody that, 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 um, that, that Mr. Free interviewed, all of the documents that he uh, encountered and, and dissected through his investigation, those, are, those become pieces of evidence uh, that, that get into a, a civil or a criminal trial. Um, and and since we're talking about evidence, I, mean, I was you know I, I think it's kind of um, I don't even really know what to say. I'm I'm kind of at a loss for words by uh, what Jay Paterno has gone on record as saying. Um, uh, you know I mean I I, I sympathize with the guy, um, but you know he he makes a he keeps uh, you know saying that well well this is about um, this is about uh, one man's opinion. And, you know, the, the, the burden of proof isn't, isn't high for this. This was a low burden. And, and really, like I said, we're not talking about a court document. You know, this is the court of public opinion. Penn State Board of Trustees hired this guy because they wanted an objective, third-party, you know, disinterested person uh, w with these credentials to, you know, go through everything with a fine-tooth comb and, and tell them what really happened. Uh, you know, unfortunately, the news was as bad as as you know, we thought it could be. 
Um, but um, you know, this this thing about oh well, you know, in hindsight, you know, I wish I, I I'd done more. You know, even Mr. Free puts that in his report. Um, you know, it's it, it's sad. It's sad, and I think you, you just have to go back to to what Phil Knight said because you know. Um, it, it's just, it's really unfortunate that, um, that it's going to end this way. And, and I don't know whether, you know, part of me thinks, uh, maybe Joe Pa's better off not being around for this. Um, you know, but part of me wishes he were here to, uh, at least so we could hear what he has to say, you know, maybe it'd be a little different now. Um, but you know, I mean, what can you say? Exactly. That's one of those things that I just saw Now some person make that point is that, yeah, it would be great to hear, or at least it would be something to hear what Joe Paterno is saying. And then the other side of the coin is that if Joe Paterno was still around, he may be going to jail if he were still around because not reporting these types of crimes is very is a very serious offense. So it'll it'll be interesting to see what these types of things take out of his estate, how people go after that type of thing. But it's a very a very serious issue, and and this report, at the very least, though it's not you know. A, a, a court report it's not you know charges or anything like that it, it still goes here's all the people if you need if you want to prove these charges if you want to prove things here's all the people i talked to and here's what they're going to say go make them say the same thing so anyway it's it's interesting to see and we'll see how things go forward there's a lot to come um we have the details coming out but there's still so much to play out in in the on the legal playing field um, right colin um you know you mentioned the um that you think that maybe Joe Pot could have gone to jail? They could have charged him. You know, I think I think we've already. You know, that is is. I think we can close the door on that. There 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 would be no criminal charges filed against Joe Pa because of, uh, you know, because of him complying with the with the uh, regulations uh, under the Cleary Act. But um, you know, Graham Spanier, on the other hand, the the president, I, I think you're going to see some criminal charges coming there, uh, and. Um, really, what this what this report does is it it solidifies anybody's uh, any of these victims' hopes for money damages because um, you know I'm not a tort lawyer, but you know when it comes to uh, you know injuries and, and lawsuits for for money damages for injuries, the the uh, the key factor almost always is you know did the person that you're trying to hold responsible did they know about it. And did they do anything to prevent it? Mm -hmm. And and you know, so in that respect, um, you know, this this um, report couldn't have been any more damning because it says, oh yeah, they knew about it. Uh, I think it even uh, you know opens the door to to punitive damages, which is where the uh, where the the um, that's that's what really makes the the dollar uh, values of these uh, lawsuits go up. Mm -hmm. uh, but it looks like Penn State is uh, taking a proactive approach to this, and they're trying to reach out to these victims and 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 trying to bring them to the settlement table. So um, it'd be nice to see them, uh, you know, put this chapter of uh, of Penn State behind them. Mm -hmm. Certainly, it'll be interesting to watch coming up to see how the civil proceedings play out and how Penn State handles them. Because up to up to this point, once things were done, you see them calling in investigators and and opening things up. So we'll see how the civil proceedings play out. They may play out in a similar fashion. Well, once again, that was Joe Bagot. For more of his insight, be sure to visit his publications at sportsandentertainmentlawplaybook.com. And for more LXPN TV interviews, visit us at lxpn.lexblog.com. Thanks again, Joe. Thanks, Colin.